So hello and welcome back to the new video of the JUnit tutorial series. So in this video we will be uh, focusing on how we can uh, write the parameterized tests in JUnit, right? So uh, till now what we have seen, uh, we have seen how we can write our test cases, what are the test suits and what are, what are these uh, assertion methods, right? So now uh, in this video we will be seeing how we can create a parameterized test cases, right? So the uh, parameterized test cases means uh, we, we are passing the values or the test uh, well, different values to that method or the test case and the test cases will accept those parameters and run uh, according uh, according to that uh, uh, accepted parameters it will run the test cases and it will tell us whether they tell whether that uh, test cases will, will give pass and fail uh, according to that parameter that we have passing to that test cases right so how how we can write this type of test cases in the JUnit we can we will be seeing in this video so let's get started uh, I will go inside my IntelliJ IDEA and over here I have set up one uh, small example for you uh, which is the traditional or the not traditional we have up till now what we have seen we have I have arranged that example over here okay, over here you can see uh, we have student score calculator class which is the Java class Okay, and inside which calculate SAT score is there and which is accepting two parameter math score and the literacy score, right? So uh, we are uh, calculating the SAT score of that user uh, based on the uh, score that it is he, he or she is getting inside the uh, math score and the literacy score, right? So uh, if the math score uh, is uh, less than zero or greater than uh, 100, that means uh, that score is invalid and then in that case we can set the sat score as uh, minus one and tell the user that uh, please uh, give the valid input or that uh, correct input right so uh, same as same goes with the literacy score if the literacy score is less than zero or greater than 100 then in that case uh, we can also set the sat score as minus one because that is not the valid score right so if that if none of these cases is getting evaluated as true then in that case we know uh, we have valid math score and the literacy score then we can calculate the sad score and the formula to calculate the sad score is uh, multiplying the math score and the literacy score okay uh, okay and so this is how we are calculating the sad score so now we have to test this uh, calculate sad score method so we are uh, writing this uh, student score calculator test or java class inside which uh, we have we have written uh, these one two three uh, four five six seven test seven different test cases and you can see what we are doing here is first we are passing 50 50 that means 50 is my math score and 50 is my literacy score and then uh, what is the formula we are doing multiplication then 50 into 50 uh, we get 2500 zero, zero. then in that case uh, this test case will get passed now here we are passing math score as minus 1 and literacy score as 50. Now we can see literacy score is valid because the literacy score lies between 1 to 100, right? So, but the math score is less than 0. That, that means this if condition will evaluate as true and then in that case our SAT, SAT score will be uh, set to minus 1. And here over here expected output is minus 1 and we also get the minus 1 here over here. So you can see uh, what are all the condition in where we, we, we can get the minus 1 as a sad score, right? So if the sc math score is uh, less than 0 or the greater than 100 and the literacy score is uh, less than 0 or the greater than 100, right? So we have written the those 4, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 uh, test cases and uh, these two remaining test cases we have written for the what if both are negative right so over here you can see where we have one method both negative so so if the both the both numbers are negative and we have another condition where both the numbers are high that means above 100 right so these many test cases that we have written over here just to test the one uh, method so so we can uh, what we can do is we can pass the parameters right so we, there are nothing uh, different from uh, these methods just we are changing the parameters that we are passing to that methods right so we will create one 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 more java class where where we can see how we can reduce this number of lines of codes by writing just one method which accept the parameters uh, from the user uh, not from uh, uh, user we are we will be giving one object or array to that uh, class and that class will uh, accept that uh, 
object array and process our test cases. Before that, we will just go ahead and uh, see whether these test cases will run or not. This is our uh, previous way that we have seen uh, so far in this series. Okay, so you can see all the test cases uh, get passed. Uh, 7 out of 7 test cases get passed. And now we will uh, go ahead and see how we can uh, create a parameterized test cases. Uh, so as so that we can reduce this, num this many number of lines of codes. And we just write one method and our, uh, jo our job will be done. Okay, Java class. Uh, let me call it as student parents test okay so inside this okay uh, so now we are since we are using the parameterize so we are we, we have to tell the this class or this class as with the annotation as run with run with j unit J unit uh, J unit para para runner J unit para runner dot class okay uh, so we are searching for dependencies just wait a minute uh, let it be done okay so i guess uh, yeah so over here uh, inside this class what we can do is uh, we can just uh, wait a minute uh, i am getting this error i will just rectify this error Okay, so the error that we are getting because we have not uh, added the dependency for the JUnit params runner. Uh, so we have added the dependencies over here. Over here you can see we have added two more dependencies, the JUnit params and JUnit params. And both are different because we are, the scope of both of these dependencies are different because one scope is test and one scope is for compile, right? So uh, now we can go ahead and just uh, do our rest of the things that we want to do over here uh, what we will be doing is uh, we will be creating one test case okay so to create a test case we know uh, add test is the annotation that we give and over here uh, since it is a parameterize so we, are, we will write parameters and uh, for now we will just write method is equals to uh, let me call it as a uh, test values Okay, so test values is our method. Uh, don't worry, I'll be explaining all this stuff in just give me a few, few minutes. Just I will write public uh, void our method uh, method name should be anything. Uh, test now. And this uh, this will accept the three parameters. Uh, one is a uh, math score. Math score. One is uh, literacy score uh, so we will just here and just paste it over here and after that uh, third third parameter is uh, expected score expected uh, expected score right so expected score that we are we also want to pass okay so over here we can create the object of the student uh, score calculator student score calculator class score is equals to new student score calculator and now uh, we can use that object to call that uh, calculate sat score and after to that we can pass the math score and the literacy score that we are getting from this uh, parameters right method and now we can uh, use the assert assert equals okay so we need a assertion assert dot assert equals and uh, to this we can pass the expected score and the actual score would, would be uh, this sc dot uh, get sat score that that we have written over here get sat score it will pa pass the 
or return the fat score to us okay so this is how uh, you can write now we just have to implement this uh, method where we are passing this uh, all these three parameters in using one object so we can what we can do is uh, we can create one uh, method private static and this since uh, this will hold the objects right so object test values and all right and over here inside this we will just return return the object return a new object right and this this object will contain the all the objects that we are gonna pass to it okay so right object and here we can pass all these uh, parameters that we are passing through this method right 50 50 to 2500 0, 0. okay so we will pass 50 comma 50 comma 2500 0, 0. so this is our first uh, value that we are passing and similarly we will pass all these uh, value that we have written over here for the seven different test cases right so uh, for the second one we we can what we can do is we can write like this uh, now we can pass uh, minus 10 50 minus 1 minus 10 50 and then uh, it should be minus 1 because since one value is uh, less than 0 right uh, so again we can uh, repl replicate that and we will write 50 minus 1 and in this case also we will, you should get minus 1 and now for the fourth one we will uh, pass on minus 1 And now uh, for the fifth one, we have 150, 50 minus 1, 150, 50 minus 1, and here 50, 150 minus 1, 50, 150 minus 1, 150, 150 minus 1. 150 150 minus 1 we will give uh, all 0 this also we will test okay and last one where both are high uh, just like uh, 100 100 and now here also we should get 10,000 because 100 into 100 is 10,000 <coughs> okay so this is how we will create those objects and we will pass this uh, method values to this test values right so we just checking okay method is equal to test values right uh, so we will go ahead and call this just to check uh, whether everything is working fine and our all test cases should get passed yeah you, you over here you can see uh, 9 out of 9 test cases will get passed uh, how many we have written 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 see uh, nine after nine test cases passed so uh, what we can uh, what we have learned in this video is how we can pass the um, parameters to the test case and according to that parameters the our test cases should run and we will get the desired output we will see here uh, e for each test cases how, how what is the output and how we are getting the output right so uh, instead of writing these many 60 line of uh, codes we can do that uh, in 30 line of code so we are uh, just half half we, we have cut down the half of the line of the codes just to pa by passing the parameters to that method right so this is how we can uh, create the parameterized uh, parameterized test cases in JUnit so thank you for watching this video